Starting World of Warcraft so many years after release can be pretty intimidating and it's very easy to get overloaded with information. In this video I'm going to give you some basic tips that will hopefully help you get started without confusing the hell out of you. So rather than wasting your time with a lengthy intro, let's get straight into it. First things first, you're going to need to buy the game and there are a number of different ways of doing this. However, before you even take that step, I would definitely suggest checking out the free trial. It's only going to let you get up to level 20, but at least it's going to give you some idea of what the game plays like rather than you just going in blind. Once you've checked out the free trial and you're happy to make your purchase then, like I said, there are a number of different ways to do so. WoW is a subscription based game, which means you're going to be paying monthly to play. By subscribing, you get access to every expansion up to and including Legion. What you won't get is access to the latest expansion, Battle for Azeroth. So if you wanted, you could just subscribe for a couple of months, play up to level 110 and then decide if you want to play Battle for Azeroth after that. If you do decide you want to play the latest expansion, then you're going to need to buy the complete collection, which you can see here. If you already happen to own WoW for some reason, then you can actually just buy the Battle for Azeroth expansion for slightly less. However, as well as including Battle for Azeroth, the complete collection actually comes with a month subscription, so it's going to end up cheaper in the long run. Also, if you're going to be joining a friend who already owns World of Warcraft, then you should use the Recruit a Friend option. This will give benefits to both you and your friend, and you can see them listed here on the website. I'm not going to go through them, but you can check them out yourself. So once you're set up with your free trial or your full version of the game, then the first thing you're going to need to do when you log in is pick your server. You may have heard people in the past talking about PvP and PvE servers, but they don't exist anymore, so you don't have to worry about that. You can take that out of your mind. We'll talk about how that all works later on in the video. These days you have two options, normal servers and RP servers, and RP servers stands for role playing servers. If you're into role playing then obviously pick an RP server, otherwise you're going to want to go for a normal server. Personally I wouldn't suggest picking a low population server or one of the new player servers because you just tend not to find other people so much and you have less options later on. However if you're going to be playing with friends the first thing you need to do is check which server they're on because if you're not on the same server as them you're not going to be able to join a guild with them. Also if you want to participate in mythic level raiding with your friends then you're also going to need to be on the same server for that. Once you've picked your server, the next decision to make is which faction you're going to play. In World of Warcraft there are two factions, the Horde and the Alliance. If you're someone who really enjoys story and lore, I would definitely suggest doing some research on the factions. I'll put some resources where you can find out a bit more about the story of Warcraft in the description down below. However, if you're going to be playing with your friends, then you're going to need to be on the same faction as them. You're not going to be able to do anything with them if you're on opposite factions. The next decision that you're going to have to make is which race you want to play as. Each race has a set of beneficial abilities that are usually referred to as racials. If absolutely maxing out your character in every possible way is important to you, then I'd suggest going and doing some research on which racials are currently most viable for different roles. However, for most casual or semi-casual players, this isn't really that important. In my opinion, at least for the majority of players, you're probably going to get far more enjoyment out of picking a race that you find cool, rather than just worrying about which racial abilities they have. If you're really into story, I'd advise doing a bit of background reading about the races, and again, I'll link some stuff in the description down below to help you with that. And it's probably worth looking at each race's starting area, as depending on which race you pick, you're going to start in a different environment, and you might like some more than others. One final thing about race is that they will restrict the different classes that you can play. There are certain race class combinations that just aren't allowed, usually due to story and lore reasons. An example of this would be a Night Elf Warlock. So if you're set on playing a particular class, then obviously you need to make sure you pick a race that is available for that class. Speaking of classes, that's the next thing that you're going to need to pick. Now my biggest piece of advice for a new player here by far is not to pick flavor of the month. Just because a class is strong now doesn't mean it's going to be strong in three months time. The best thing to do is to pick the class that you think is going to be the most fun for you personally. To be totally honest, as a new player, you're not going to have the skill level to even see the benefits of having the more powerful class in a particular meta. One thing you do need to consider however is that in WoW there are three key roles when it comes to group content. These three roles are tanks, healers and damage dealers. In very basic terms, tanks are in charge of being at the front of the group, taking the damage and defending the rest of their team. Healers are responsible for keeping everyone alive and damage dealers are there to, well, deal damage to the enemy. You'll see here that when picking your class, the game will actually tell you which of these roles your class can fill. If you really like the idea of tanking or healing, then make sure you pick a class that can tank or heal. Some classes, the mage for example, can only deal damage. 
If you really can't decide which role you want to fill at this point, then I suggest you go for a hybrid class, such as a paladin or a druid. These classes are able to fill all three roles, and with a druid you can even do two different types of damage, close range damage and long range damage. One final thing about classes is that with a new account you'll notice that you can't play as the Death Knight or the Demon Hunter classes. This is due to the fact that these classes start at a higher level and you need to reach a certain level to unlock them, but you don't need to worry about that right now. Speaking of high level characters, you actually have the ability to boost your characters to max level. Don't do it. With Battle for Azeroth coming out today actually, it's not going to be possible to boost your character to 120 which is going to be the new level cap. However, you can almost guarantee that later in the expansion that's going to change and right now you can still boost to level 110 which was the cap for the previous expansion. Depending on how and when you purchase the game, you might even find that you have some free boosts on your account. These will come in handy later on when you've already leveled, you know a bit about the game and you're ready to have another class at max level. However, if you boost straight away, you're not going to have a clue what you're doing, it's going to be massively overwhelming trying to get to grips with a max level character. And you know what, as much as elitism in WoW is really annoying, when you see a boosted character come and join in at max level content and just ruin the experience for everyone else by not knowing what to do, you kind of understand people. Honestly, level your character properly, learn as much as you can about it along the way, and then when you hit max level, you're not going to feel so overwhelmed and you're not going to take so much crap from other players for not knowing what to do. This leads neatly into my next point which is actually very similar and that is just don't rush the game in general. It is true that the majority of WoW's content, at least it's more challenging content, is an end game but there's no reason not to enjoy the content along the way. You're going to have a miserable time if you're just focused on the destination rather than enjoying the journey. In my personal opinion, WoW is way better at end game than it is while leveling but it doesn't mean that I didn't enjoy that experience myself and I'm glad that I had it. It's going to take you dozens of hours to hit max level and if you're treating it like some kind of grind, some kind of job, then it's going to sour the experience before you even get to end game. So just try and enjoy the journey. So with all this in mind, let's actually jump into the game with the character we just created. Rather than toggling through every single option on your interface, what I suggest doing is just play in the game. Just get started with this first quest. Regardless of your race's starting area, here you can see the human starting area, you should see someone pretty near to you with a yellow exclamation mark over their heads. This is an indicator that they have a quest to give you. All you have to do is go and speak to this NPC and accept the quest. Quest in itself is very hand-holdy and wow these days and you have a lot of indicators as to how to complete this quest. First of all, if you bring up the map by pressing M, then you can see exactly where you need to go. There are also indicators on the mini-map in the top right and if you really can't figure out what the quest is asking you to do, then you can hit L to open up your quest log and just read through it once again. Once you've completed the quest objectives, which in this case is simply to rid the forest of these wolves, then what you need to do is go and turn the quest in to gain a reward. Sometimes this will mean returning to the person that gave you the quest in the first place, sometimes you might go to a different person, or sometimes it might just pop up there and then and allow you to complete the quest. In this case, we need to go to the person who originally gave us the quest. But before we go and turn our quest in, let's take a look at combat, as we've just engaged in some. Combat and WoW relies on a system known as tab targeting where you select a unit with your mouse cursor and then you can initiate a fight by either right clicking it to toggle your auto attack or you can use an ability which you can see here on your hotbar. Many of these abilities will in fact also trigger your auto attack depending on what class you are. Some classes like the mage don't really use their auto attack however you'll find classes like the warrior use it all the time so you need to have a little play around with whichever class you choose. You'll probably notice some numbers on your hotbar. You can see here that my Frostbolt ability has a number one next to it. And that's because I can use the number one numeric key on my keyboard to actually use that ability. This is highly recommended over clicking your abilities with your mouse. The reason for this is that using keybinds is far faster than clicking your abilities and it will make you a much better player in late game. This is especially true in player versus player combat. Clickers do not go very far in PvP. I'm not a particularly good player or some kind of brilliant PvP player, but pretty much even I could beat anyone that was clicking unless they were really good. There are of course some exceptions to this and for some people they might not even be able to use the keybinds on their keyboard and they need to use the mouse and that's absolutely fine but just be aware that if you can use keybinds then you definitely should. At least if you want to be competitive in PvP or just have an easier time of it in PvE. 
A bonus tip here is to try and avoid turning with your keyboard as well. Using the A and D keys to turn rather than turning with your mouse by holding down the right mouse button can make for very awkward movement and again it's just one of those things that's going to make you far slower and far less responsive in late game. Don't let all this overwhelm you, I'm actually intentionally only covering it briefly in this because you can come back later on and learn all of this stuff. There are countless guides out there and I bet you could find a 10 minute video that's just dedicated to teaching you about movement in an MMO. So just keep these things in mind because getting into good habits early on will help you later down the line. So you may have noticed as we've been killing these wolves we've been gaining experience. This is indicated by the bar that you can see at the bottom of the screen. Once you fill that bar you gain a level. In this case we were able to hit level 2 because we handed in our quest and as part of our reward we gained some experience. And by the way as of today the level cap is going to be 120. There are actually a number of things in game that will help you level faster. I don't want to go into all of them here because a lot of them won't be relevant to you right now. However, one thing that is relevant for you is rested experience. Basically, when you spend time in a city or an inn, you go into a rested state. While rested, you'll gain double experience from kills, and the longer you stay in a city or an inn, the more rested you'll become. Rested experience also accumulates offline, so it always makes sense while leveling to either log out in a city or an inn. Of course, the really exciting thing about gaining experience and leveling up is getting access to new abilities. You won't get new abilities at every single level, but when you do, they'll be automatically placed on your hotbar, at least until you run out of space. When you do run out of space, all you need to do is go into interface settings and you can add an additional bar there. If you notice that an ability isn't on your bar, then that's not a problem. All you need to do is press P and open up your spellbook where all of your abilities are listed. I would recommend reading and fully understanding each ability as you gain it and try to use it as much as possible, even if you don't strictly need to. Let's consider the counterspell ability that mages have. Now in basic terms, what that ability is going to do is stop an enemy from casting a spell and silence them for a short duration. And to be honest, while leveling is not really going to be needed to help you win a fight, you should just be able to brute force most things. However, this spell is going to be absolutely essential at max level and if you're already used to using it then that's half the battle won already. This is one of the key reasons that I tell new players not to boost a character. If you do that you're going to have to learn dozens of spells at the same time and it's going to become a pretty stressful experience. Now the abilities you have in WoW are actually based on something called your specialization. Remember we talked earlier about tanks, healers and damage dealers? Well your specialization is going to decide which one of these roles you fill. For a Paladin, for example, you could go for the Protection spec, which would make you a tank, the Retribution spec, which would make you a damage dealer, or the Holy spec, which would make you a healer. In the case of the Mage, you have three damage specs, Frost, Fire, and Arcane. Specializations won't actually become available till level 10, so don't worry if you can't see them right now. But it's probably not going to take you long to get to level 10, so it's definitely worth looking into. To check out the specializations you have available, you just need to hit the N hotkey. You can see here which baseline abilities you're going to get if you go down a certain specialization, and it's also very clearly labeled whether the specialization is for tanking, healing, or damage dealing. As you can see here, you can very easily switch between specializations on the fly. There are some places in the game where you won't be able to do that so easily, but you don't need to worry about that right now. Each specialization can actually be customized further using the talent system. If you click the talents tab, you'll notice that you unlock a new row of talents every 15 levels. You'll be able to pick one talent from each row depending on your playstyle and what you're trying to achieve. Again, don't worry about the details right now, just be aware that they exist and make sure you experiment with them while leveling so you get an idea of what your class can do. Talents are something that can be easily reset and remember earlier when we talked about going into a rested area? Well, in rested areas you're also able to adjust your talents freely. You may notice that you also have something called honor talents, but we'll talk about that a little later in the video. That's enough on talents and abilities for now, let's talk about how you get around the world. After all, this is an MMO and there's a massive world to explore. Rather than just walking everywhere, you can actually speed yourself up by acquiring mounts. At level 20 you gain access to basic mounts which will make you 60% faster, and then at level 40 you gain access to epic mounts which will make you travel 100% faster. Additionally when you hit 60 you'll gain access to flyer mounts and you can make your flyer mount go faster with various upgrades. However, a lot of the places you visit will have something called a flight master. They'll be indicated by the green exclamation mark above their head. Every time you see one, you need to go up and right click them to unlock that flight path. Once you do so, you'll be able to pay the flight master a small fee for them to fly you to a different flight location that you've unlocked. This will save you a hell of a lot of time walking around. As useful as flight masters are, they won't get you everywhere. Sometimes you're going to need to cross between continents or even between planets and there's different ways of doing this. Depending on what faction you are and where you want to go, you'll be able to use boats, zeppelins and ideally portals if you can find one. 
There are far too many specific journeys in WoW to list them all here, but now at least you know of the different ways of traveling, and Google's your friend when you want to know about a specific journey. Next, let's talk about items or loot, the things that we often get pretty excited about finding in an MMO. Well in WoW you can find all kinds of different items with different levels of rarity. Item rarity is indicated by colour in WoW and we can go through them very quickly. Grey indicates a poor quality item, white indicates common quality, green is uncommon, blue is rare, purple is epic, orange is legendary, light gold is artifact and then light blue is heirloom. Items in the game are split into a number of different categories, for example you have trade goods, you have consumables such as potions and then you have things like armour and weapons. The best thing to do when you're trying to learn about new items is enter their name into Wowhead and you'll be able to find out exactly what they're used for. I can't possibly list every single item in this video. One thing I will suggest though is that as early as you can, get some additional bags. You're going to start with very little inventory space and you're going to quickly pick up a lot of items. Some of them, basically the grey ones, you can just sell straight away and not worry about, but there are plenty of things that you're going to want to keep. There are NPCs selling bags all over the world, but ideally you want to go to the auction house and get a decent sized bag for a good price. Like I said, many of the items you find are going to be trade goods, and these are related to professions. There are a number of professions available in WoW, for example blacksmithing, leatherworking and tailoring. Now I'd be lying if I said that the gear you get from these professions is particularly useful while leveling. And you don't even need to do low level professions to be able to craft high level stuff later on. Every expansion now has its own independent system for leveling professions, so you can just start Battle for Azeroth for example and get straight into blacksmithing without having to have done blacksmithing in any of the previous expansions. I'm not trying to put people off, if you really enjoy crafting and you just want to do it for the sake of it then go ahead. But if you just want to make some money then I'd suggest picking up some gathering professions. Gathering professions are things like mining, skinning and herbalism. These professions allow you to gather different resources when you're traveling around the world and they can actually still be quite valuable, even the low level ones. You can gather up a load of herbs for example and sell them for a reasonable price on the auction house, especially if you don't have any gold and you're just starting the game. At endgame professions become a lot more relevant, well at least some of them do, but that's a conversation for another day. Oh and one other tip if you want to make money in game is make sure you loot everything. Even the most useless items in game have some value and if you sell them to the vendor you'll quickly have a lot more gold than other players who just leave them. Anyway, moving on. When you get to level 10 you'll notice that you've unlocked a feature called Battlegrounds. These are instance player versus player battles in which one team of alliance players will fight against a team of horde players. There are different objectives such as taking down the enemy leader or playing a game of capture the flag and it can be a lot of fun, I definitely suggest checking it out. However, be warned, people have been playing this game for a long time and you are likely to encounter more experienced players. Don't be put off by this, it doesn't take long to learn, you just might find yourself getting your ass handed to you a little bit early on. There are also more competitive modes of PvP such as rated battlegrounds and arenas, but again these are something that you'll be doing later in the game, probably not as you're just getting started. If you want to play a battleground, all you have to do is hit the H key, it will bring up the appropriate tab and then you can pick which battleground you want to choose for. Bear in mind at lower levels you won't have access to anywhere near as many battlegrounds as you will at max level. Before we finish up talking about PvP, I just want to mention War Mode. When we were looking at servers, we talked about how there used to be PvP and PvE servers. Well instead of that all servers are now the same and you can toggle war mode on or off. If you toggle war mode on you can fight with players of the opposite faction in the open world. There are rewards that come with this such as increased experience but be wary they can cost you more time than you actually gain if you get killed a lot. If you've hit level 15 then you've unlocked access to dungeons and you'll actually see here there's a tab here that says dungeons and raids. Forget about raids for now because again they're really an end game thing, however dungeons are something you can do straight away. And in fact I'd definitely advise doing them, they can be a huge amount of fun. Basically a dungeon is where 5 players get together and take on some more challenging content than they otherwise would in the open world. There's always going to be a tank, a healer and 3 damage dealers as that's the composition you need to get through most dungeons. Dungeons usually have a storyline, there's quests to complete in there and to be honest it's just one of the better ways to get used to team dynamics early on. Admittedly they're not as difficult as they used to be and they're certainly not comparable to end game dungeons but they're definitely worth doing, you'll learn a lot and you get a lot of rewards for doing them as well. Just like with Battlegrounds you can use this tab to queue for dungeons and it shouldn't take long before you get a group together. One thing that is worth knowing is that you get a group far faster as a healer or a tank as they're much rarer than damage dealers. Also you don't have to use the group finder to do a dungeon, you can just get a bunch of 5 people together, go to wherever the dungeon entrance happens to be and just go and take on the content that way, the dungeon finder is just a convenience tool. 
Of course, if you want to spend a lot of time playing with other people, which makes sense as WoW is an MMO, then you're probably going to want to join a guild. There are lots of different perks and benefits of being part of a guild, and as your reputation with the guild goes up, you'll get access to more and more of these rewards. However, that's secondary, and the key reason to join a guild is to be part of a group of like-minded players to enjoy the experience together. You can find a guild in-game by using the guild finder, though I'm not entirely sure how useful that actually is, or you can just put a message in general chat. But you can also check the WoW forums, Reddit, Facebook and any other place that WoW players gather and you'll probably find a group of players that share your values. By the way, if you're an EU player then you're very welcome to come and join our guild on Silvermoon. If you want to be part of that then make sure you join our Discord server and introduce yourself. A link can be found in the description down below. This next point is kind of obvious to WoW players who've been around for a long time, but it might be quite confusing for new players. When you get to level 60, which won't take long, it's going to be a little bit confusing because all of a sudden you're going to be expected to go to one of two places, one called Outland and one called Northrend. Now the reason for this is because Outland was actually the place that Warcraft's first expansion, the Burning Crusade, was set. And Northrend was where the second expansion, Wrath of the Lich King, was set. Now it used to be that you leveled through each expansion one at a time. However, with so many expansions, this became a problem. I won't explain the exact reasons why, but the solution that Blizzard put in place was you can essentially choose which one to play. It really doesn't matter which one you go for, and if you like, you can do a bit of both. The same thing's going to happen to you at level 80, where you're going to choose between the Cataclysm expansion and the Mists of Pandaria expansion, and then after that, it's going to return to normal. You're going to level through the Warlords of Draenor expansion and then the Legion expansion, finally getting to battle for Azeroth. It's obvious if you've been following WoW in recent years, but it seems like it could be pretty confusing for a new player. To be honest, you probably have enough information at this point to make a solid start, but there are a few other things I feel are worth knowing early on. Firstly, I want to bring to your attention the Adventure Guide, which you can access by hitting Shift J. The Adventure Guide is basically a summary and some guidance for the content that the game's trying to suggest for your level. It's basically a great place to look if you're stuck for what to do next. Next we have your achievements, which you can bring up by hitting Y. There are achievements for almost anything you take part in in-game. There's achievements for PvE, for dungeons, for solo content, for pet battles, the list goes on, and a lot of people find it very addictive just chasing achievements. In fact, some people only do achievements when they play WoW. They're certainly not vital to your progress, but they can be a bit of fun, and they're just as relevant when you're leveling as when you're at max level. Next up we have titles and reputation, and I've grouped these together because a lot of titles do come from reputation, but they also come from other things such as achievements. Titles are pure vanity things that like I said you can get from achieving different things in WoW, building reputations with different factions, or just taking part in a particular event. At any point you can hit C to get to your character panel and change which title you're currently using. Also on your character panel you'll notice the reputations tab. Unlike titles, building your reputation with certain factions can actually be massively beneficial to your gameplay. You may be surprised to hear that Warcraft actually has its very own answer to Pokemon with battle pets. Essentially you can collect pets from all around Azeroth in various different ways and you could use them to battle against other players or NPCs. There's a whole set of quests and achievements and many other things around pets and it is a whole own thing so if you're interested in that then you can do some research on it. Another feature you're going to come across sooner or later is Transmog. This is essentially where you take one piece of gear and you give it the appearance of a different piece of gear. The one rule being that you have to own that previous piece of gear and it has to be equipable by your class. There are many places in the world that this can be done so use Wowhead to find out which one is closest to wherever you are. It's also worth mentioning there is an in-game calendar that you can access in the top right and this will show various events and holidays that are ongoing in WoW. A lot of these holidays provide bonuses to level in among other things so they're always worth checking out. Finally I want to talk about add-ons and my advice of add-ons is just to take it slow. Don't just dump 20 add-ons you don't understand onto your system just because you watched a YouTube video with someone who's been playing the game for 10 years and actually understands what they do. It's going to be confusing, half of them are probably going to break and it's just going to make your experience really stressful. If you're going to use add-ons, which I definitely recommend you do, add them one at a time, make sure you fully understand their use and then add the next one. The easiest way to install add-ons is actually via Twitch. A while ago, Curse, the company that hosts a lot of the add-ons for WoW, merged with Twitch. So now the Curse add-on installer is part of the Twitch platform which you can download for your desktop. It's really simple and intuitive to do once you've downloaded it. 
There is of course plenty more to learn, but my best advice I can give you is just to learn it organically. Take it slowly, let things slot into place naturally. You won't enjoy the journey if you're just stressing yourself out, thinking about end game, thinking about maximizing absolutely everything early on. Just let it sink in a bit at a time. If you want to join a community where you can ask questions and meet other new players, then you're very welcome to come and join our Discord server. Also, if you're interested, I stream WoW most weeknights, usually around 9pm UK time. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to know when I go live. Anyway, that's it from me. I hope the video was useful. You take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you next time.